to enter in a kindergarten with older kids. Some of them may be, you know, um, uh, almost six years old. Will um, demand a lot from those children. This is a very, very um, weighty decisions for uh, parents to make. So I have a couple of questions. Uh, uh, when this was going being approved in in ISP, did CPS uh, attend any or make any public comment in particular about the early um, entrance to kindergarten? So the way this happened was um, because the governor was outgoing, this was passed on to us. Oh, okay. And we and up to this day, we don't have really clear administrative guidelines. And I completely agree with your assessment of the situation. This is why it really is important to us to have that school team. And we're even putting, so there will be a handbook that will be released um, beginning tomorrow or Monday. So parents and principals and teachers can you know, can read all the rules and follow all the steps in the different phases. So we want to make sure, that's why also we didn't only, um, we're not only doing the academic testing, but also the developmental survey, and we're putting a 91st percentile to make sure that, you know, uh, this is one way that we understand a kindergarten readiness. Um, second two is we are giving the school up to the, fir the first 10 weeks of school, which is the end of the first quarter. Right up to the end of the first quarter, the parents um, and the teachers have a right to continue to have communication and say, is this working for this child? Um, you know, because we're not assuming it's going to be a good fit for all, even if a child qualified to get into that kindergarten classroom. Uh, board member Melendez. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, just to uh, clarify uh, or answer your question specifically, CPS did lobby against this bill specifically in Springfield, and we were unsuccessful. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Jackson. Um, I, um, I, I, I'm glad to hear that there will be a monitoring for the first 10 weeks. Do you, are you contemplating um, sort of monitoring this, whatever number of children actually enter early throughout the whole year mm -hmm. and in order to maybe introduce changes next year to right. this policy. One thing that we have already discussed is um, tracking the data for these students throughout the year. Um, also surveying teachers um, so that we can get a really good sense of how these students uh, perform, adjusted, um, how long does it take, um, and if we need to make minor amendments to the policy at the end of the school year. And um, yeah, I think those were my my major concerns. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, uh, daycare versus preschool. I mean, was that part of the ISB requirement, or is it something that uh, seems to get that discretion over? Because it seems like some daycare programs are pretty well structured. Yes. To 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 help children, you know, to mature and and, and deal with the rigors of. You know, kindergarten so so on the application form it will actually ask the parent what their children's or child's experiences and they would write the name of you know the institution or the daycare or the preschool program um, you know the truth is you know in the first year of implementation you know those are areas like we would just want to make sure that this child has had an experience being with peer age peers, uh, you know, having a teacher, routines in the classroom, because those are like real big adjustments to a child who has had no experience at all being among, you know, peers his or her age. Okay, so they care. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. um, how much will this all cost, including the uh, additional testing, psychologists, et cetera? And I just also wanted to confirm that this is something being mandated by the state, but am I correct that it's not being funded by the state? Correct, this is an unfunded mandate. And um, currently we're looking at around one, a little over a million dollars. The, the yeah. million dollars is for the total that yes. uh, all three areas, early entry, whole rate acceleration, as well as single subject. Right. For early entrance to kindergarten alone is a, about $850,000. And then related to that, you mentioned the team um, for students, particularly for the early entry into kindergarten, including social workers, counselors, mm -hmm. and perhaps other teachers. Do all of the schools have those types of staff? And if not, who, who will be part of the team? Uh, the, so the principal will be able to designate that team, right? And majority of the schools will have counselors, if not a part-time counselor. 
uh, but definitely the teacher, the assistant principal could be part of that team. Uh, Just and to clarify, all of our schools have counselors. It's a foundation position. Sorry about that. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I was just curious about mm -hmm. who, like, who else you imagine being part of these teams. Right, counselors, if social worker is needed, doesn't have to be. Okay. You know, definitely the teacher, um, the principal, or an assistant principal. Thank you. I, I have another question, if I may. Is the testing going to be administered in languages other than English? So that is something that we are working with with our um, school psychologists because part of this gifted should be the alternative language. Yeah. I guess you, you shared some um, data from kids who have been in CPS preschool. I was wondering if you had an expected number of children who will either be interested in or will end up using uh, any of these three policies. Probably most for the early entrance, but for all three. Uh, so none for the single subject, right? Uh, but for the whole grade um, policy, we were about close to 100 students met the pre-qualification. But because we have no previous experience with this policy, um, it's all you know the possibilities of, of what we're you know. But we want to make sure we're prepared at least. And for the early entrance, for the early kindergarten, what would be the estimate? So we're probably going to have around 2,000 to 2,500 students. Um, again, the parent will have to really think through it. Some parents could say, "I'm going to do it," and then last minute decide, "I'm going to keep my child," you know, in preschool. You, you'd so. estimate 2,000 would be. Yes. Pre qualified. Yes. Not all of the, those kids are not the necessarily teachers. all applying. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the, part of the reason I'm asking is I'm trying to assess what do you expect will be the racial equity impact? Um, and if we don't have any estimate for the total, uh, where you're going to say we don't really know. Well, that's why we did a breakdown per network because that's the data that will tell us in terms of how many students are we taking up, talking about, and that could give us some of the racial profile um, per the network. Okay. Again, because we don't have a previous um, you know, data to, to be able to track and compare, um, you know, we're going to do our best to make sure that what we're doing this year, that we are monitoring um, our numbers. And that will give us a better sense of how we move forward um, with a policy if we need to make amendments or tweak for next year. And my last quick question, you mentioned uh, the handbook. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the school teams. Uh, my impression is that those relate more to fitting students or for the, the selection process. I'm wondering about the supports that schools or teachers need for implementing a more heterogeneous classroom, an even more heterogeneous classroom now by age, and where we see those supports. What do you think those are and where do you think they'll come from? Um, I think overall, one thing that we want to make sure is that our professional development design always incorporates differentiated instruction and that means um, we call it the tier one instruction and, and supporting our teachers and understanding like while I may know my content, how do I deliver using all the data pieces that I have to be able to implement quality instruction um, if I have you know, different groups of students at different learning um, phases. So this is no different um, from this. That's why it's important, especially for early entrants, that the teacher is highly aware that I have a young, a, you know, a student who is coming in much younger than you know his or her peers, and to um, uh, you know provide a more um, personalized approach to um, that student. I also want to add just some of the supports that are available through the network. So every network has a social emotional learning specialist, which is one of the big the the key components that we you know were concerned with. So we have that support to push into the school as well as a part of the school team. And then we also have um, our K2 specialists at the network to support in terms of the academic side of it. So both for academics and social emotional learning, we do have supports housed within the network structure to be able to be a part of the school teams and support the efforts of the teacher and the school for students who do qualify for this. We have one last question. Yeah. It's, 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 it's more of a request, first of all, uh, it's helpful to have the context that uh, we weren't advocates for this. So thank you for doing the best with what you have to work with. The one request that I do have um, is that instead of waiting for a year, that you prepare an update to the board by midpoint, just so things are going and, and what sure. are some of the things that we could do to help mm -hmm. in, in that process. Uh, I know there's a lot of unknowns, but it is, let's not wait a full year to 
raise up some of the issues that we might be encountering that we, we did not foresee. That will not be a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll proceed with the next presentation. Jeffrey Grimkin. 